the scariest flying dinosaurs. Oh, hell no. You just show pterosaurs, which are not flying dinosaurs. If you want to show flying dinosaurs, just show birds. Hello, YouTube. Dinosaurs have been the talk of the town for decades. Dude, already this video is going really bad. Since their extinction, they've left a vivid imprint in the mind. What is that now? Is that supposed to be some kind of dragon from a fantasy world? It looks like it. Modern day era. Numerous archaeological findings have left us with many questions unanswered. I bet you've never come across such thrilling and ugly creatures such as these ones, let alone the ones that move by air. What do you mean by that? You made a bad experience 1,000 times more confusing. We're lucky these massive creatures don't exist in our time. Stay tuned as we piece through our most devastating list of flying dinosaurs. Number 6. Sungdoripteries Let's shift our attention down to Central Asia, where a beast once res- This looks more like a tapijara to me rather than a Sungdoripteris. I don't know how to pronounce it, so uh, I'm probably going to butcher it, and I- I'm- I'm going to offend people, okay? Sungariptus! Did I pronounce it correctly, or did I offend paleontologists? If I did, I'm sorry, and I'm allowed to... And you're allowed to cancel me on Twitter. Cited. Sungariptus. Also Sungariptus. Who pronounces that like that? Is a famous name related to archaeological fossils retrieved belonging to this kind of dinosaur. No, it's a pterosaur. How many times do I have to say it? Back in the day, before the establishment of present-day China, which was in 1949, it was described in 1964 by paleontologist Yang Zhong Jian. A huge... They're now just showing Tropic Anathis. Oh boy. Reptile lingered over the then natural setting. Worms and small insects were its main source of food, but its huge mouth had teeth. Man, this is just not Sunga. Could tear apart whatever meal they came across. It ate shellfish, fish, insects, and even dead animals found on land. Even though this breed of dinosaur wasn't the- There is no excuse to call a pterosaur a dinosaur. I'm even more upset than Uncle Roger being upset to the point where he put his leg down from his chair. I'm that upset. Predatory kind, its devastating appearance was enough to scare the wits out of you. This creepy winged reptile- So you're calling a pterosaur creepy instead of, I don't know, freaky? Why are you- saying creepy didn't have a pleasant appearance and its curved beak made it even more devastating to look at picture a world where flying dinosaurs is something normal it is already birds just like the way we see birds roaming the skies dude birds are dinosaurs what are you talking about another species with such a strong appearance is the thalassodromius which closely resembled a huge chicken does this look like a chicken to you? It had a massive beak and an enormous cranial crust. What do you mean cranial crust? Whose per- Also just showing, uh, uh not Tropicanethus, Ornithochiris now. Again, bruh, not all pterosaurs are synonymous to the Ornithochiris. This remains a mystery to this date. Number 5, Cryodracon Boreas. At number 5 on our list is the Cryodracon Boreas, better known as the Frozen Dragon. It's not called Frozen Dragon, it's called Cold Dragon. Cryodracon. Its physical features were huge, with a large protruding head and a beak-like mouth. Fully spread out, it stretches close to 16 feet apart. Where did you get that info from? It wasn't considered amongst the largest flying reptiles for no reason. The massive creature dates back to about 80 million years ago. No, it lived around 76.5 million years ago during the Campanian Age of the Late Cretaceous. And resided in present-day Canada. Just imagine crossing paths with this flying monster. Dude, it's just an animal. How would you react? The name Cryodra- This doesn't look like a Cryodracon to me. This looks like a starving- How is this- How is this- Pterosaur not dead, it's clearly starving, or is it just this slim or something? Dracon Boreas is inspired by the famous TV series Game of Thrones. Cryodracon Viserion, not Boreas. That featured the giraffe-like monster in one of their epic episodes. Tell me, does this look like a giraffe to you? However, in real life, it did not breathe fire. Little to no information is actually known about this creature, and scientists are still puzzled with only a handful of remains recovered. 
Number 4. The Brazilian Thalassodromius Flying Dinosaurs Holy crud, what a name. For real though, what even are you talking about at this point? Our next flying reptile takes to the cool suburbs of Brazil, where over 120 million years ago, the Thalassodromius dinosaurs originated from. Not a dinosaur, and you got the time wrong. Who could have thought such creatures roamed the Earth? Flying reptiles with huge wings ranging close to 15 feet? That's not all. These dinosaurs weren't cl Now you're just showing Avatar. Bruh. Also, stop saying that these creatures are dinosaurs. I'm getting tired. Closely similar to the rest, as they had distinct facial features that included a weirdly curved beak-like mouth and huge eyes. Okay, is that beak? Didn't the Tupuxwara had that as well? The most remarkable feature was the huge cranial crust that began from the tip of the beak to the back of the head. It consisted of bone and soft tissue structures curving into a weird shape. Well, they're lightly built and essentially hollow. The massive head structure remains a mystery, but many have concluded that it might have been meant for mating purposes. Okay, you're also showing wrong pterosaur. And also about the Thalassodromius head crust thing. We still don't know if- Ah! Not Avatar again, bruh! It's a cool movie, but it's not intended for educational purposes. All of those- all of these creatures, they're just purely fictional. If not, then for possibly thermal regulation, or to just intimidate its prey. In your own thoughts, what do you think it was for? Experts claim that this reptile fed on fish only. Only? Come on, bro. Every animal doesn't eat just one thing. But who would dare come close to this creature? Let alone come close to it, would you even think of seeing its remains in a museum? I wouldn't mind it. And while we're talking about South America, there existed another gruesome- What is this you're showing now? Nothing even makes sense anymore. ...dinosaur by the name Tropionathus. Dude, Tropionathus is not a dinosaur. I said that a million times already. Also, that is not Tropionathus. That is some- I don't know what it is, but it's from a movie. This dinosaur is one of the many that existed back in the Cretaceous period. When? Where? 112 million years ago. It's noteworthy for its gigantic wing size and unique facial appearance. Didn't Ornithochirus and Culverinchus both have similar appearances? Just seeing this reptile gliding through the sky would give you a horror movie feeling. Imagine coming across almost the same size as a fighter jet. Now you meant something that looks like a terrifying version of a fighter jet. How would you react? Some of its fossils have recently been discovered at the base Arabi River. Remarkable fossils that paint a clear picture of the ugly beast can be found in plenty of museums within this region. The residents of this area ought to be very I already said it before, but never use Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World as a source for education. Lucky to be comfortably existing in what once was home to vicious, ugly dinosaurs. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to win a hundred dollars. Pure scam. No. Or risk getting haunted by one of these flying beasts. Number three, the Romanian Hatsagopteryx Flying Monster. My god, those names, bro. Okay, at least you mentioned Hatsagopteryx. This humongous reptile resided in Romania back in the early days. What do you mean early days, bro? Hatsagopteryx only lived at the end of the Cretaceous. The Hatsagopteryx is credited for its vast appetite and large head structure, which was almost 12 feet long. Just imagine the size of the body needed to fit such a large head. From seeing the photos, the first question that comes to mind is, what is this creature f Now we're just showing a Pteranodon. Bruh. Feed on. Considering its mess, I guess it's capable of eating more than a dozen cows in one sitting. It is a terrestrially foraging generalist predator. This reptile was quite dominant and challenged even larger prey without fear. What? Hell no. You're trying to imply that an albatross can take down something like a rhino. Its vicious and predator instinct has left a mark forever within the Transylvania region. In addition to the modern myths that many people have associated with this region, it only seems fair that Transylvania has its spooky rep. To date, Locals living here are still hooked to feeling the fear of dread. I think this is supposed to be a Ramborghiania. Why are you showing a Ramborghiania? This is supposed to be about Atsagotrick. Dread from pictures of this super predator. What made it even more unquestionable is the stories that go about this creature and the traditions adopted to protect themselves against them. 
Also, the fact now you're showing Quetzalcoatl a skeleton. The fact that many fossils have been retrieved from this region in the past. All these are a contributing factor that support the existence of these dinosaurs. Despite the lack of substantial proof, I wouldn't take chances in this region. It would take less than a second for a gigantic creature like this to turn me into dinner. And with that, it's now time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. Oh dear, I don't have a good feeling about this. Mega dinosaurs, mega dinosaurs just reinforces that. So if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it in a future video. Number two, Tropionathus. Tropionathus, originating from South America, is attributed as the largest flying reptile that existed in the early Cretaceous period. It's the largest pterosaur found in the southern hemisphere. Boasting a remarkable 8.2 meter wide wing length, 8.26 meter long wingspan, the beast was to be feared. However, it seemed less big on land, but once in the air, it occupied massive space, and would leave a big shadow of darkness if it flew over you. Its medium-sized head was held together with a long beak and weirdly shaped tip. One look at this creature, and you're bound to get nightmares. It doesn't look that freaky. I've seen worse, okay? Technology successfully recreated this monster. Bro, when will you stop calling everything a monster? Just leave them alone. You're not a four-year-old. You're a fully grown adult. And animating a game. If you pick up any number of the latest dinosaur video games, they most likely feature the likes of Tropionathus. If you're looking forward to getting thrilled, you can check out its remains in one of the Australian museums around. This is certainly the most devastating flying dinosaur that ever existed. What do you mean devastating dinos? <laughs> Lord, as if this video can't get any worse. Don't you agree? <laughs> Number one, Eremborgiania, king of the desert. Who would have thought that these frightening creatures also lived in the wilderness? Bro, do you think that every creature is tamed? One of the scariest flying dinosaurs felt the humid temperatures and scorching sun as an ideal destination to stay. This you're showing is not in a ramble. The Aramborgiania breed of reptiles resided in the desert country of Jordan. They were spoiled for choice and fed on amphibians, mammals. You're showing Hatsocotrix again. And also baby dinosaurs. Whatever they came across automatically turned into a meal. Um, no. What made it easy to corner and capture its prey was its proportionally huge body structure, which would make the king of the jungle freeze in its path. What do you mean, king of the jungle? That's a, that's a huge bra moment. Nobody can define its size for sure, but from fossils discovered, it's said to have a wing length of close to 40 feet. Okay, so it had a wingspan of 8 to 9 meters, according to 2022 Gregory S. Paul. Let me try and give you a visual description of this creature here. Maybe just try not to make a mess in your pants. Originally, this gigantic reptile had a wingspan of about 35 to 43 feet. 36 to 43 feet. Not to mention, it was 16.4 feet on land. This feature scared its prey, and the sight of it would scare you and me both. They were accustomed to hunting in their habitat rather than finding hunting areas. So how did they come to be? Back in the 1940s, a very strange fossil was uncovered almost accidentally by the railway in Jordan. This desert had been home to this very large flying reptile. Its existence had been dated to the Cretaceous period. More specifically, the Maastrichtian. Originally, they had been named Titanopteryx by Camille Ehrenborg, who had taken up the task of describing it. She had described its bones as being skinny, cylindrical, and thin-walled, as they measured a mere 62 centimeters. Unfortunately, they later discovered that this name was already taken by a fly, and it was agreed upon that it should be named after Camille. Coming to think of it, due to their large sizes, I wonder where most of these massive creatures resided. Feel free to share any information you have in regards to its natural habitats in the comments down below. I don't even know, to be honest. Who knows? They probably slept suspended on trees like bats. What? Wouldn't the immense weight just break the tree branches? But this brings us to the end of our segment. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you mention Hatsagopteryx, a ramble... <laughs> A Ramborghanian Cryodracon, why do you mention Quetzalcoatlus? Even if you mentioned it, you it didn't it didn't appear on the list. 
and instead there's Sunga. For more thrilling topics like this, feel free to suggest them down in the comments section below. For any flying creature we might not have covered, don't worry, we'll probably feature it in our next excerpt. Okay, so that's how the video ends. Wow, what a journey. That video was just incredibly dumb. How could they forget about Quetzalcoatlus? Bruh. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, see you all next time. Yeah, thanks for watching.